The Little Rock Teachers Union is fighting back against the governor's plan to reopen schools in five weeks. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Craig O'Neill and Marlisa Goldsmith will join us from her home shortly. TSB 11's Melissa Zigowitz breaks down the Little Rock Education Association's demands and why some say teachers and students are in danger. Everyone else seems to be pushing, oh, we have to go back to school, we have to go back to school. A Little Rock High School teacher who wants to remain anonymous feels throwing everyone back into a classroom in five weeks is a recipe for disaster. None of their logic or rationale behind it seems to really be caring about what's actually best for students and what's best for teachers. The LREA is instead asking the state to have a three-stage approach to going back to school. Phase one would be full remote learning. Students would be given the equipment to take classes online and teachers would receive training on how to properly get ready for in-person classes. Phase two would be in-person classes twice a week and virtual for three days. Schools can enter this phase once Arkansas has seen a decline in cases for 14 days. The last phase is full in-person instruction and can happen when cases drop below 50 per day. I think a phase reopening is the only smart and effective way to reopen schools. The teacher I spoke with wants to see the state take plans for virtual learning more seriously. Because if we're spending all of our time and efforts planning for in-person and then we have to switch to virtual again, that's just misused time. She says heading back into the classroom while there's no sign of the virus slowing down is a scary thought. I care about them so much. I want to be there for my students. But by doing that, I also know it means for the foreseeable future, I don't get to see my own family. We reached out to both Governor Asa Hutchinson's office and the Little Rock School District for comment, but have not yet heard back. And right now, these are just suggestions from the LREA. But if nothing changes, the union can take a vote to not go back to school. Reporting from Little Rock, Melissa Zigowitz, THV 11 News. We start off the new work week with some splash and dash showers for some of you folks out there and that brought some clouds and also some cooler temperatures. So right now it's not feeling too bad. Temperatures into the low to mid 70s across the area. Still a lot of clouds in place and those clouds will make it kind of difficult to spot out Comet Neowise. I'll have more on that coming up a little bit later, but underneath the clouds, nothing showing up. So the chance of rain is out of here while you're sleeping. But here are those rainfall totals from radar now and you can see a path through Pine Bluff all the way back through Arkadelphia. The rain estimates maybe as much as two and a half inches pretty close to Antoine and Arkadelphia and then less off to the east. Tomorrow we're going to do it again. Make sure of sun and clouds temperatures warming up into the low to mid 90s with that chance of a pop up shower storm. I'll have more on your forecast coming up. Well, right now in Arkansas, there were about 7100 active cases of coronavirus and 6000 of those are in the community. 699 new cases were reported today. Of those, only 11 are in correctional facilities. Six more people have also died, bringing the state's death total to 363. We also saw another jump in hospitalizations today. There are 471 Arkansans fighting the virus from a hospital bed tonight. That's 18 more than yesterday. A mask mandate is now in effect in Arkansas. Governor Asa Hutchinson signed the executive order last week, which states you must wear a face covering over your mouth and nose in all indoor and outdoor environments where you're exposed to non-household members and where you can't have six feet of social distance. There are exemptions for certain medical conditions, but violating the executive order could mean a misdemeanor charge and a fine of up to $500. As soon as this mandate was announced, the questions started rolling in, and Marlisa, you've been looking into some of them. Yeah, Craig, understandably so. People want to know what you can and cannot do while wearing a mask or face covering. One THV 11 viewer reached out to our Verify team asking if you have a concealed handgun permit or you openly carry and wear a mask, will you get a felony charge? Well, we reached out to the Arkansas State Police for answers, and a spokesperson told us according to concealed carry license statutes and administrative rules, there is nothing that prohibits a licensee from wearing a mask, especially one designed to diminish the threat of spreading disease. So we can verify tonight wearing a mask to prevent the spread of COVID-19 while legally carrying a handgun. 
is not against Arkansas law. Of course, this is just one of so many viral claims going around on the internet about face masks, and our Verify team has been working nonstop to break them all down for you. Here's our Jason Puckett. The most frequent questions our Verify team gets are ones about masks and how they work. So let's go through some of them. Starting with the biggest question, do masks actually work? Experts, including the CDC, NIH, NIAID, Mayo Clinic, and Johns Hopkins say yes. The CDC explains that their main purpose isn't to stop the virus from getting to you, but it's to keep you or contagious people from spreading it. COVID spreads mostly through respiratory drops from coughing, sneezing, or even talking, and any mask, even cloth ones, can catch those droplets and prevent them from spreading. And since COVID patients can be contagious long before symptoms, these masks are important to wear before you're feeling sick. Next question, do OSHA or other government groups warn against masks? Multiple claims cited OSHA and said mask usage could be harmful and should be avoided. Well, we checked with OSHA and they say these claims are false. OSHA publicly supports wearing masks in public and for employees returning to work. While some politicians debate the use of masks, there are currently no government or medical groups that warn against using them. Question three, can wearing masks cause carbon dioxide poisoning or harm my oxygen levels? One of the more popular claims against masks say they trap carbon dioxide and cause you to breathe it back in but experts, including the CDC, say that's false. They point out that this is only really a concern with sealed respirators and medical grade devices, and that any buildup of carbon dioxide can be, quote, resolved upon removal of the mask and breathing room air for a minute. So cloth masks worn for short periods aren't gonna cause any carbon dioxide problems. Finally, can I use the Americans with Disabilities Act to get out of wearing a mask? Posts like these tell you to cite the ADA if you don't wanna wear a mask, and there are even printable cards you can carry. But the Department of Justice says these aren't real and don't carry any legal weight. It's also important to note, stores may not be able to force you to wear a mask, but they can legally refuse to serve you if you choose not to wear one. Now, there are many more claims about masks circling the web right now, but so far, every claim against mask has turned out false or misleading. If you see a claim like these, hold off sharing it and send it our way instead. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Arkansas has received more money for utility and energy assistance. The governor announcing $8 million going toward low-income families who are behind on their bills or need air conditioning. Our own Ashley Godwin tells us how you can qualify for the benefits. Starting next Monday, people can begin applying to get help with relief from those overdue bills and the summer heat. So I see the long lines of individuals that are out there, the unemployment and things like that. So we understand that individuals need these CARES Act fundings right now. Arkansas now has more than $8 million to provide assistance during the pandemic. It's through the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. The money is being divided into two areas where Arkansans are needing the most help. The first is the Supplemental CARES Act Crisis Program. It's for people who are behind on their electricity or energy bills. Each household can get up to $1,500 of assistance. Typically, the crisis program requires uh, an applicant to present a shutoff notice uh, during this time, especially when folks are affected by COVID-19, applicants can submit a past due notice. The second is the summer cooling program, which allows a person who does not have working air conditioning to receive repairs or installation of an AC unit. To qualify, you must meet the income requirements, plus either be a senior citizen, have a disability, have a child who's five years or younger, or have a medical condition that requires air conditioning. They have to be willing to let our inspectors and our individuals come into their home uh, to install it and to come back and just to uh, check on things and make sure everything is okay. So far, the Central Arkansas Development Council, which funds LIHEAP, has helped more than 17,000 people this year alone. The CEO says they will continue to help everyone in need. In Little Rock, I'm Ashley Godwin, THV 11 News. And if you need help with your energy bills and are interested in learning more about LIHEAP, text the word BILLS to 501-376-1111 and we'll send the information straight to your phone. 
If your children are part of the free or reduced meal program at school, you need to be, need to be on the lookout for an important white envelope in the mail. About 300,000 students who don't receive SNAP benefits qualify for a pandemic EBT card. Families receive one payment of $319 per student and will have a year to use that money. If you already get SNAP benefits, this money will get added to your current EBT card. Congress is about to discuss the next coronavirus relief package. But first, they have to decide what should be in it. Tonight, we want to know what you think. Go to THP11.com slash vote and tell us, should stimulus payments be given out regularly until the pandemic ends? Natalie Brand reports from the White House. Republican leaders met with President Trump at the White House to negotiate the next coronavirus relief bill. Kids in school, jobs, and health care would be the theme of the proposal that we hope to come together and present to our Republicans. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says he and Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin will brief Senate Republicans on the plan Tuesday. Negotiations are still underway, but the current GOP proposal is expected to cost around $1 trillion. Republicans want tax credits that incentivize businesses to bring people back to work, as well as continued unemployment benefits, but with conditions. We're going to make sure that we don't pay people more money to stay home than go to work. We want to make sure that people who can go to work safely can do so. Negotiators say school funding is a priority, but the Washington Post reports it could be tied to schools reopening in the fall. Schools are preparing for the fall without the necessary guidance and resources to open safely. The country is crying out for relief. President Trump also announced he'll be bringing back the coronavirus press briefings, which were a daily feature here at the White House when the pandemic began. And I think it's a great way to get information out to the public as to where we are with the vaccines, with the therapeutics, and generally speaking, where we are. And uh, so I think we'll start that probably starting tomorrow. Monday afternoon, the president tweeted a photo of himself wearing a mask and said some believe it is patriotic to wear a mask and that no one is more patriotic than him. Sunday, the president said he does not support mandates for people to wear masks. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House.